For more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com. This is Dark Cybernetics Algorithms Complete Series, Episode 1, Bubble Sort. Follow along with our free course documentation. In this first video, we will cover the bubble sort algorithm, concepts like brute force, recurrence relations, asymptotic analysis, notation, arrays, data structure, lists, problem descriptions, proofs of correctness, legal input, steps for analyzing and designing algorithms, analyzing source code, running time, big O, big theta, big omega, and flow of control diagrams. The bubble sort algorithm is applicable for low input data because the algorithm takes on a brute force approach to sorting energy values. This particular algorithm has a running time in best case of O of N on the rare occasion of an input list being already sorted and has a running time in worst case an average case of O of N squared. A set can be described as an unordered, sometimes empty, collection. A distinct item is an element. There are other types of algorithms. There are algorithms that address sorting, searches, numeric problems, geometric, combinatoric, graphed, and even string searches. In this course series, we will also go over graph notation and using data structures like linked lists. When we discuss efficiency, an algorithm can have several types of efficiency. Worst case, best case, and an average case. And this information relates to the way the algorithm performs based on the input size. Other examples of brute force algorithms are algorithms like the string matching algorithm, the convex hull problem, the closest pair problem and the selection sort algorithm. There are common running times. There are states like constant time, O of 1, there's logarithmic time, O of LG, N, and there, there is a state like linear time, O of N, there's log linear time, O of N, L, G, N. There's quadratic time, O of N squared. There's also cube rudic time, O of N cubed. There's polynomial time, or O of N to the K power for all constants K. And there's exponential time, O of K to the power of N for all constants k. We can develop a hierarchy of functions going from logarithmic to exponential where log n then n then n squared up to 2 to the n power. This particular notation and proof techniques are generally covered in discrete mathematics courses in the bubble sort algorithm. Our aim is to sort a list of n elements. This process is accomplished by comparing the neighboring adjacent value, j, with its comparative value, j plus 1, in an iterative loop-based process. After each pass, we record the number of operations and index comparisons to reduce a running time. A running time is the estimated amount of time needed for a program to be executed inside a computer system. If the algorithm is performed correctly, the larger elements will bubble up and appear on the right hand side. We will give a formal definition for this process by naming this process as an algorithm. An algorithm is an unambiguous logical step-by-step -step process for solving a problem in a finite amount of time in legal computational steps. 
We will itemize the swapping technique to demonstrate legal computational steps. In the simple swap algorithm, our aim is to exchange a value held in A and pass it into value B. A problem description is used to specify the parameters of an algorithm. Here in this problem description, we specify the name of the algorithm, the legal input and output, our goal, the algorithm pseudocode, a proof of running time, and also a proof of correctness. Some algorithms in artificial intelligence also require a proof of optimality. A program pseudocode can be defined as a description of the inner workings of a procedure. For an algorithm, we can specify orders of growth by measuring the input data in relation to the number of operations performed. Algorithms which run in infactorial time are undesired. See permutations and combinatorics for more information. A desired algorithm should be memory and space efficient. It would be a good idea to learn your log rules. We can say that there are asymptotic efficiency classes for certain degrees of problems. Instances for instances like constant time, we can say that the algorithm grows with the input size, while others like in log n have the characteristics of divide and conquer algorithms. Algorithms like merge sort and quick sort have this characteristic, while others like sequential search run in n or linear time for problem instances, while log n refers to cutting a problem size by some constant factor. These fractional algorithms have at least linear running time. Algorithms that are n squared have generally two embedded loops. Algorithms that fall into the cube rootic time are generally covered in linear algebra courses when we have matrix operations for non-trivial problems. Exponential refers to subsets of problems where we generate all the subsets of a particular problem to n element sets. When we say n factorial time, we say that there are n set generations or permutations of all the n element sets for an algorithm. When we think about algorithmic problem solving, there are certain steps we can use to streamline the process of creating an algorithm. The first step of creating an algorithm is to understand the problem. Understanding the problem takes on different conceptions. A problem instance, this data or this scenario, needs to be mapped into a computer or onto paper or into some other variant medium. We need to think about the type of problem. Does this problem take on a decision? We need to produce exact output or do we need to approximate a particular situation? To do this, we will need to formulate certain types of data structures and incorporate certain design techniques and paradigms for producing a decent legitimate output. After we've decided on which data structure we would like to use, here at this stage, we want to design a particular algorithm to use. After this algorithm has been produced, we want to prove this algorithm's correctness. These steps are iterative. If there's a problem in proving the correctness of algorithm, there may need to be some revision, or they need to change the data structure, or the code may need to be <laughs> truncated to fit the expected running time. And then after we produce the algorithm that produces an output. We determine if this algorithm is optimal. So we analyze the algorithm. And finally, after these stages are completed, we can produce this algorithm's code to be used on a computer. A computer is someone or something that performs calculations. A program is a set of rudimentary 
tasks or procedures that need be performed. In relation to a database, jobs are submitted to the batch. Operations, jobs, in a first in, first out, or last in, first out structuring are executed sequentially. So our program should execute and be performed in a systematic, logical way. Programs take on a top-down design for the bubble sort algorithm. The code takes place inside of a block. This block can be analyzed to determine a running time. The diagram above shows a methodology used to analyze blocks of code. Beyond the algorithm, there's a slot for cost and there's also a slot for the times the algorithm, the operations ruin. We can break this process down into five rules or five constructs used to evaluate an algorithm. In using asymptotic notation, we can characterize functions and have an implicit understanding of a function based on its growth by ignoring the lower details. For this first element, we assume an arbitrary time unit so each operation takes place sequentially. So for the following operations, for operations like arithmetic and function returns, assignment, numeric comparisons, indexes, pointers, and input and output operations. Our third step will be to check the running time for these sections like if and switch statements for these conditional evaluation periods for these interval clauses. After we completed those sections, we need to get a summation of the loop execution periods for the number of times each loop is executed. This would be by time plus update loop checking time and time for the loop setup. Our final step will be checking for function calls and their parameters calculations respectively for the required time for the execution of those bodied functions. In relation to operations, traversing a list linearly takes place in O of n times. However, operations like insertion, deletion, assignment, computation, and others take place in constant time in particular data structures. In this case, for the itemized version of the simple swap algorithm, all operations take place in constant time. A data structure is a particular way to store information inside a computer. There are other concepts like abstract data types. When we refer to an abstract data type, we talk about a mathematical model for a certain class of data. When we refer to an algorithm's correctness, for this instance, we refer to correctness as for every input instance. It halts and the correct output or solution is given for that particular computational problem. But for proving correctness, our algorithm should yield the required result for a legitimate input in a finite amount of time. An array is a sequence of n items of the same data type. These items are stored contiguously in a computer's memory. In our algorithm evaluation figure, there are three definitions. Big O, Big Omega, and Big Theta. For each of these, there are rules. The upper bound, or Big O, refers to the growing faster than. This refers to a function f of x is in the set of O of g of x if and only if there exists a positive constants c1 and x0 greater than 0 such that this f of x function is less than or equal to this constant times this g of x function for all x greater than or equal to x0. For big omega or our lower bound, this function grows faster than. So we can say that this function f of x is in the set of 
omega of g of x if only if there exists positive c1 and x0 greater than 0 such that this f of x function is greater than or equal to the c times g of x function for all x greater than x0 for our definition for big theta this is a tight bound so this function grows as fast as so we can say that this f of x function is in a set of o of theta of g of x if there exists c1 and c2 and x naught greater than zero such that the c1 times this g of x function is greater than or equals to this f of x function which is greater than or equal to this c2 times this g of x function for all x greater than or equal to x naught. There are also integer definitions for each of these. Also, there are other states like little omega and little o. The algorithm or pseudocode will be placed on the left hand side and the evaluation of the number of recurrent steps would be placed in the right hand side. A summation of the number of operations would be bound at the bottom. See summation notation for more information. For the simple swap algorithm, operations take place in constant time. For this data structure, we will need a temporary value. This temporary value is called temp. Information held in B is copied over into the temporary value information held in A is passed or copied into value B. Then finally information held in temporary is passed into A thus completing the swapping cycle. In programming variables are used to hold information data and strings. A string is a collection of characters sometimes a word. A file path is a string. For the bubble sort algorithm we will not use a UML or any other object oriented programming technique. Our primary concern is determining the running time of the algorithm. On the course documentation for algorithms episode 1 bubble sort, let's look at the bubble sort problem description. On your own complete the problem description on the problem description, the input should be a legal input, meaning a mathematical statement for the input data. If your algorithm inputs a list, it should return a list. See notation for more information. So for the bubble sort algorithm, you must define legal input and output. And what is our goal for the bubble sort algorithm? Dark Cybernetics has provided a partially completed bubble sort implementation in C++. For this implementation we use two for loops and an if loop for the swapping technique the comparison between J and J plus one. This implementation uses a two-dimensional array. Arrays in many languages start at zero and move forward respectively. When we refer to arrays, we can use variables like n and m, meaning row for n and m for column. For three dimensional arrays, i, j, k, we can use x, y, and z respectively. When writing notation, one may need a variable to denote instances such as start time and finish time, such as SI and FI to denote the start initial starting time and the finishing time for certain particular algorithms. However, writing a proof for an algorithm is a different step. The proof technique takes place in this fashion. We will demonstrate with the dominoes proof, a common proof concept covered in data structures courses. See proof techniques for more information.
let's familiarize ourselves with some notation for all in the set of a member a set an array upper bound lower bound there exists such that if and only if in not subscript superscript see predicate calculus for more information note that log rules may be required to solve some problems in algorithms algorithm cases like divide and conquer algorithms require a better understanding of number systems in this course series we will cover concepts such as graphs and tree notation and other concepts like recursion and other higher complexity classes once you have completed the bubble sort problem description let's move on to the next section the let's try it section in the let's try it section let's watch a demonstration of the bubble sort algorithm let's start first by populating this array for each step of the algorithm we compare each indexed value and we keep track of the number of iterations needed to complete the algorithm based on the number of operations performed in this case the operations being performed are comparisons once the operations have been completed the bubble sort algorithm should put the numbers in ascending order an additional sheet was added to the course documentation let's try it in the let's try it section for algorithms episode one bubble sort we have five indexes positions where we can add elements to be used for our bubble sort implementation let's populate this array next we will compare the neighboring adjacent elements if j plus 1 being the second element after j j being the first are different we'll swap those values for each iteration we'll keep track of the number of operations and the number of comparisons once the algorithm has completed the numbers will be in ascending order in the coding challenge section your goal is to implement the bubble sort algorithm you can download free compilers online there are compilers like bloodshed code blocks and Microsoft Visual Studio Express for Java one can use Eclipse or NetBeams there are also text editors like notepad which can be used to compile code in Linux you may want to use VI and are now available there are many programming languages a person can use to implement the bubble sort algorithm there are higher level languages like Java C++ Python Perl C sharp and others which can be used with similar coding structures and programming paradigms to reduce functional reliable implementations things to note when programming the syntax or programming rules may be different or language dependent some languages 
use curly brackets and others use spaces to denote blocks of code. Others languages use terminating statements to end statements inside of a computer system. Some languages have no classes and the entire piece of code is read as one entire piece of instruction. Data types specify the type of variable being used inside of a program. This is usually listed at the front of the program statement. In this case we're using integer values so the data type would be integer or int in this language. Data types can be boolean being true or false values, strings, integers, doubles, floats, and others based on the particular language being used or utilized to develop an application. The assignment operator is an equal sign in this language and the statement is left assigned. An array is noted by brackets so a variable with brackets with a number inside of it the number inside of it or the variable inside of it would denote the size of the array. If one want to pre-populate this array we could use the uh, assignment operator equals and have curly brackets and put numbers or numeric values, integer values in this case and separate those numbers, those numeric values with commas. Another curly bracket and a semicolon or a terminating statement to end that particular statement in the variable declaration section of the program. A function generally has a parameter. In some cases a function may not need a specified parameter. This parameter is generally used as a return type. In order to write a program that continuously takes information one will require control structures. Certain control structures use logic. Consult flow of control diagrams for more information like that of a truth table. In a while loop a condition must be met in order to complete the operations being performed where one side is true and the other side is false. An if loop follows this same paradigm but the branch factor is only of two final states. A side which denotes if the condition is true and one side denotes if this condition is false. There are other control structures like the if else and the case break statements and others which are language dependent. Some languages produce executables while others produce like in Java jar files. See programming languages for more information. For this programming project name it first last name underscore EP1. Studying algorithms gives us a better understanding of our natural world in relation to that of logical systems. We can comprise a set of rules or rudimentary instructions to delegate the degree of hardness for problem instances in relation to that of research, in biomedical, computational, logistic, social, and economic systems. Use caution when defining terms. An operating system ready and wait are states. In an example of a state machine, like in the traffic light system, stop, go, and yield are different states. And for more information, please visit our website at darkcybernetics.com.